UK unemployment and the UK economy are both hit hard at the moment. Furlough scheme is about to come to an end. Is the UK property market about to crash as a result? Well guys, stay tuned and let's find out. Hi guys, my name is James Corsier and welcome to the Money Paradox podcast. We're all about helping you become financially free so that you can focus on what you really want from life. Today's video is all about the UK property market and whether it is about to crash because of what's going on at the moment. UK unemployment, record highs, the UK economy already in recession and not just that, We've got the furlough scheme ticking away and about to end at the end of this year. So surely the stock market's about this. <laughs> Not stock market, sorry guys. The UK property market surely is about to crash, right? Well, to be honest, I was so surprised when a lot of people were coming to me and asking me this question. I've had it time and time again. And the reason why I'm surprised is because I'm in the property market a lot. I'm buying a lot of properties at the moment and I read a lot of information in this area and everything I read and see actually shows a very strong property market. So the first thing I did was actually went online and tried to search for information as to why people were thinking this. And what I saw was a lot of media articles with very strong, scary headlines talking about how the property market is already in uh, really bad shape and is going to get a lot worse. But then when I look at the articles and see what they're saying, a lot of the information is completely exaggerated and extrapolated from small points. Take one that I saw today. They were talking about how all banks are getting rid of their mortgages in preparation for big problems in the property market. I looked at it and really all that was happening was that a lot of mortgage companies were increasing their interest rates or reducing how many people they were trying to take in at the moment. But when you look at what's actually going on, that's mainly because there's so much demand. They can barely keep up with the mortgage applications that are going on at the moment. Demand for property purchases at the moment are in record heights. Market activity hasn't been this strong for five years, guys. So when I speak to a lot of lenders and I'm applying for multiple properties, I'm applying to seven different lenders at the moment. When I speak to them, they're effectively saying the reason why we pushed interest rates up, yes, in part is because there's uncertainty. Um, but the biggest reason is that they can't handle the demand at the moment. And there's certain restrictions around COVID-19, which means that their work takes longer than normal. So the best way in which they reduce the amount of demand coming into their company is by making their figures less attractive. So they increase interest rates, they make it more strict in terms of what they will allow in terms of applications. There's also so many other articles around uh, property prices dropping or about to drop and the furlough scheme and everything. But let's actually go into it and really look at the reality. But the first thing is, why do we see so many media articles talking about things that when you do dig bigger digging, something else is the reality? And that is because, firstly, there is a big conflict of interest there. Most media articles are not written to educate and inform you. They're written to make you read it. Media journalism at the moment is really struggling. There is so much less money in it. And what I'm increasingly seeing is each year, pe people within this industry, not, not everybody, but a lot of articles are going more and more around a 
attention grabbing headlines. And so they're wanting to write things that are going to scare and make you read on. And writing an article saying, hey guys, yeah, the property market's doing okay. Mortgage prices are, are okay. You know, we're getting kind of nice growth at the moment. No one's going to read that. If you've got an article saying the property market's about to crash next year or interest rates are about to go through the roof, you're going to want to read that. You're going to want to find out what's going on, right? And so really bear that in mind when you're reading articles. Think, why has this person read, written this article? What's the purpose of it? Who's written it? And, and what's, what's it all coming from? The other thing is there are certain biases that you get, tend to get in lots of different people or different media publications. A couple of ones are is uncertainty bias. So when there's uncertainty, people tend to get scared and fearful and that comes across in media and people's just general perspective. COVID-19 is a really big deal. We haven't seen something like this for maybe even a century, right? This kind of pandemic. Also recent past bias. So because everything else has been doing so badly right now, the assumption is it's just going to get more worse. Unemployment's really bad. It's just going to get worse. The economy's doing really badly. It's just going to get worse. So therefore, everything else is going to follow on and the whole thing is just going to fall down a big black hole until we all die. <laughs> okay, maybe an exaggeration. But when people get scared, they get more scared and more scared. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Last thing I want to talk about is believability. There's two things for me that make that up. One, do you trust the person or the thing that you're reading, right? And when I say trust, are they telling the truth? Yeah. And so is the best way to work that out is are their interests aligned with you? Are they doing it for the right reasons? And the second one is, do you respect them? I.e., are they educated enough? Are they well founded in their knowledge and understanding of that subject to provide the information they're providing. A lot of articles are written very quickly by people who aren't that knowledgeable in the industry. So instead, when I do research in a particular area like property, I follow specific people or specific organizations that I trust that I respect. I have a high believability in those sources. And the best thing to do is to is to research a particular person or a particular organization until you can get to that place. Because if you do, then you're a lot more likely to take their information and absorb it and, and trust what you're reading. So, so for example, HomeTrack is a very good, reliable source of information. It is very well respected. Uh, but there are others out there or going directly to the source, you know, using the data coming from Zoopla or Rightmove, right? That is at the heart of the statistics that are coming out in the UK property market. Okay, so with all that in mind, what are people saying in terms of those that I'm following? Zoopla, Home Track, for example. Well, 2020 have got really strong growth at the moment. 2.7% up this year, okay? Prices have grown 2.7% just this year, okay? And we're not even anywhere near towards the end of it. It's the strongest market activity in five years. It's better up in the north, so cities like Manchester and Nottingham have had over 4% price growth this year, uh, sorry, in the last year. Places like Leeds and Liverpool have got over 3%, price growth, but even places like London have achieved 2% price growth this year. So, you know, this isn't just small pockets doing really well. This is across most of the UK. So why is it so good? Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. Looking at 2020, generally speaking, the view is that we will be up at the end of this year not by massive amounts, but probably two or three percent, a nice, you know, decent amount of price growth, nothing crazy. So how have we got this 
given unemployment is so high and the UK economy has done so badly due to COVID-19? Well, there's a whole load of reasons. Firstly, there's been a huge backlog as a result of COVID-19. So many people were wanting to buy uh, during COVID-19, but couldn't. So as soon as the lockdown finished, they all kind of came out. It's like, right, I need to get on with this. I need to just do it. So they were just kind of cracking on. And so therefore all that demand kind of fled into the market, but the supply didn't come in as quickly as demand. So demand went up and supply only went up a little bit. So the demand versus supply has a big impact, right? That means that prices kind of have to go up to, to, to acknowledge uh, that situation. Secondly, there's been a lifetime reassessment for a lot of people. People have sat at home for like two months contemplating into their, uh, you know, into what they want to do for, for the rest of their lives or the next few years. And so through that, they've realized they want to kind of take a shift. And often that involves kind of moving home. And so from that, a lot of people have decided to move and buy somewhere else or start to buy. Next thing is what I would call uncertainty fatigue. For so long, for like multiple years, we've had the whole Brexit fiasco plus COVID-19 and it, it just feels like it just kept going and going and going. And it gets to a point where people go, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna buy a property. A lot of people I know that had been waiting on the sidelines, waiting, waiting to see if things get better and more stable, have just got to a point where they can't wait any longer. They don't want to wait any longer. Next one, stamp duty. Recently, the UK came out and with a big improvement to stamp duty temporarily for this accounting year. And what that means is for a lot of people, the cost of buying uh, a property is a lot cheaper. And this is not just for first time buyers. This is also for those buying a second home or an investment property. So it's not just that it's going to be cheaper and therefore people can afford it more. It's about the signaling. When the UK government does something positive in relation to the UK property market, people consciously or subconsciously think, oh, the UK property market is going to be protected by the UK government. It's going to be supported. They're looking out for it. They want to make sure it's doing well. And so that perception then means that people feel more confident in the property market, go out and buy, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The next one, and this is not as well known. In fact, I rarely see it talked about, but it is really big. And that's what's going on in Hong Kong. Because those that live in Hong Kong can quite easily move to the UK and get a visa here. A lot of people over in that country are investing in the UK large amounts of money, and in particular in property, as a safe haven, as a protection for if things go badly in Hong Kong, because then they can move very easily to the UK and they've got that money invested. And that is really pushing prices up because it's investment money flowing into the economy. Also because the pound is so cheap at the moment, a lot of people purposely invest in the UK property market because relative to the value of their currency, the UK property market is cheap. Properties are cheap. Next one, or the last one really, is around the injection of money from the UK government. Billions of pounds have been pumped into the UK economy, and that money has to go somewhere. Now, this time around versus 2008, they've been much more effective at getting it to the people, but that money has to flow somewhere, and that is a lot of money. And where that money tends to end up are in safe haven assets, places where it's going to reliably appreciate and not devalue. Because if it kept in cash, you are at the risk of devaluing that money through inflation. And when you pump loads of money into an economy, there's a big risk of inflation. 
So it tends to go into the stock market or the UK property market, all right? So maybe not hitting so much now, but there's a big view that in the future, property prices will be fueled from that injection of funds. Last thing I wanna kind of pick up is around recessions. So I think the big reason why people are worried about a property market crash is that in the past, when we've had a recession, often that has been linked to a UK property crash. So I think, well, we've had a recession this year, we must have another property crash, right? Surely. Well, yes, recessions can cause property crashes and they tend to be linked. But it's usually actually sales volumes that are impacted and not prices. And that's because property market is very illiquid. It's slow to move. So when things suddenly get uh, hit like the economy, what happens is people just don't sell. If they think, if they had to sell tomorrow and they'd get 20% less than if they sold a month ago, instead of people just selling anyway and losing 20% of their value of their property, they just don't sell, they just hold on to it. Now, some people have to sell, but the vast majority of people just wait. So the reason why you get big crashes in the property market is when you get big impacts that could devalue property market, devalue property prices, coupled with the need to sell your property. Okay, so in 2008, people were so badly hit for a lot of reasons, which we won't go into now, not only did there was a huge pressure in the devaluing of properties uh, and the, the sales levels went down, but people were forced to sell their home. Because at the moment, you don't. So let's go on to that. Why are we in a situation with a massive recession? I think this is like the biggest ever recession in the UK ever, yeah? Especially in such a short period of time. But we don't have that big impact to the property market. Why is that? Well, firstly, in the last few years, property prices haven't really gone up that much. When you look at other times when you've had big crashes in the property market, it's been shortly, it's followed shortly after big rises in the appreciation of houses. So. 2006, 2007, massive increases in the prices of property. So that when suddenly something happens, like in 2008, the global financial crisis, and suddenly the demand suddenly changed and credit seized up and so on, then the, the big drop, there was a big fall. You know, it's like, it, it's like rises really high, there's further to fall, right? Well, the last few years, prices have gone up very modestly, just in a few percent each year. Next one is that there is big mortgage support. So in this recent uh, recession from COVID-19, there's been a big push from government to support people generally, but also with their mortgages. So payment holidays, but not just that. You know, if you're in a real situation and you contact your mortgage provider, you know, there is a big, big push for those lenders to help you out and to allow you to get through that. Very rarely would you see someone needing to sell the home at the moment. It would be for much wider situations, not really because of COVID-19. They're already really struggling and they're and they had many other problems, and then they went into COVID-19, yes, maybe they would have to sell. But if it's just COVID-19, vast majority of times, the lender will help you out and allow you to get through it. Next one, low interest rates. So because interest rates are, have already been so low, but are still low, it means that the cost of mortgages is very low. So. Yes, people might be struggling at the moment and being getting less money or be unemployed and so on. But because their mortgage rates are much cheaper because of interest rates, 
that means that it there's less headroom sorry there's more headroom so affordability can go down you can have less income or mortgages could go up slightly and and you can still afford it okay it's not like previously when interest rates are really high and then if the your income goes down or the value goes down there's a big difference there next one credit is still available you're reading articles saying oh nobody wants to lend and so on but the reality is yes they are most lenders are out there lending slightly stricter so before COVID-19 you could get 90% loan to value mortgages on residential properties now it's usually 85% maximum for example but you can still go out there you can still get mortgages rates might be slightly higher but again credit is absolutely out there because in part one interest rates are so low so it's super cheap and two the government is purposely pushing money in and, and almost forcing lenders to still lend to support the economy lastly unemployment yes is a big big concern and unemployment is already much higher than it has been but the vast majority of those people unemployed are young people and young people in the vast majority of them are not homeowners so it doesn't tend to impact the uk property market as much as those that are already owning a home so yes unemployment is really bad and it can impact and it can have a negative impact on our property market but one is all these other reasons that are pushing it up and two because it's uh, more of a bias towards younger people that aren't homeowners it has less of an impact on the property market so guys in summary prices are already doing really well this year market activity have hit uh, record highs since kind of the last five years general view is that prices are going to be up two or three percent this year there may be a kind of stabilizing early next year or maybe even a slight drop because yes the furlough scheme because of unemployment and some of these one-off factors like the backlog calming down my personal view is over the next few years once we get past that the growth of properties will start to build up and get higher and higher and get really uh, strong price growth over the next few years maybe for the next kind of five six years until we build up to what people are worried about now which is that property crash fueled probably by a whole number of things one of which being those really high price increases and then we're probably going to get a price growth uh, a property crash but guys don't just take my word for it okay go out look for other sources of information with high believability find people that you trust and respect and get good quality valuable information please don't read those media headlines they are bad bad for your health um, and and i highly recommend go out and finding some much better quality sources guys i hope you found this video useful if you did please do let me know let me know if there's any other content you'd like me to cover questions from this video feedback let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to click that subscribe button for weekly valuable content. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.